Happy Sunday, First Baptist Church family. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Children and Youth Day. I'm ready. I hope you're ready, because this is going to be a complete takeover. Before we begin, I would like everyone to share this link with their loved ones and family members so that they can be a part of this experience as well. Now, we will have a selection by the Unashamed Praise Team. It's the witness. It's the witness. It's the weakness. Everybody clap your hands, come on. It's the weakness. Hey, it's the weakness. It's the weakness. Let's do it, my God. It's me, so strong and so mighty, my God. Plans for me. It's Kayla White, and I will be doing this scripture today. The scripture is 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. 
and it reads, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the world, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Hello, First Baptist family. My name is Kellen Rowell, and will you please pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us, and we thank you for the pastor and his family. We pray on today that the pastor can preach a great word and somebody can get saved on today and we pray that you can forgive us of all of all of our sins and we pray for the president that you can touch his heart and he will change his ways and we thank you for loving us and we love you in return in jesus name we pray amen thank you all so much for that wonderful scripture and prayer first baptist thank you all so much for being such grateful givers your tithes and offerings have not only allowed us to continue our virtual service, but you have also allowed the youth to continue having unashamed. At any point in the service, if you would like to continue giving or give, you can visit the link on the screen. Now, we will have a youth takeover of the FBCG News. Hi, First Baptist family. Welcome to Children and Youth Day. I'm Amaya Gaskill, and here's what's coming up this week at FBCG. Join us for Tuesday night Bible study as we live stream on our website and social media platforms on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Due to continuing concerns regarding the spread of COVID-19, the 2020 Love Beyond Limits Couples Retreat has been canceled. All registered couples will receive an email with additional instructions. While we miss this annual opportunity to get away and focus on our marriages, we're already looking ahead to next year with plans to make the 2020 retreat bigger and better than ever. Calling all leaders, whether you're leading a church, ministry, business, or nonprofit, there's a long list of things to consider to ensure your organization's success. From operations and taking care of your people to making audiences aware of your message and purpose. The 2020 Virtual Beyond Conference can help you in all these areas and more. On Saturday, June 20th, join Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. along with the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden leaders and ministry partners for invaluable tools and insight on topics such as leadership and education, using social media to combat social distancing, entrepreneurial opportunities post-COVID-19, and building an online store. These are just a few of the conference's 30 workshop offerings, which will all be available on demand long after the conference ends. Beyond will also help you connect with other leaders and ministries and organizations similar to your own. Our virtual conference platform will allow you to join virtual groups related to your interests and to network with other attendees one-on-one. -on -one. If you're ready to invest in your ministry or organization, by gaining the tools and resources needed to succeed in the current environment and beyond, join us for Beyond 2020. Visit www.thebeyondconference.com today to register. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these and more events on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. Greetings, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. My name is Reverend William S. Berkeley Jr. And on behalf of the Children and Youth Department and Reverend Queen, Jonathan Queen, and Reverend Pat Singleton, who's a children's pastor, it is another 2020 annual Children's Day celebration. Today, we're going to give you a panoramic view of the ministries of our department that you can see exactly what's going on. Amen. Thank our pastor for allowing us to share this moment with you. Hello, my name is Obed Gint, and I am a young disciple at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I am ready to go to all the nations and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, because in Mark 16 and 14, Jesus called me to. We ready. I'm Tanaya White, and I'm ready to be unashamed to represent 
by leading my fellow Girl Scouts, my fellow dancers, and doing whatever God calls me to do. We're ready. My name is Adrian Brown, and I am a dynamic disciple. God taught me to be obedient and respectful. We're ready. My name is Brooklyn and this is Gabby. We are children of God and God taught us to be helpful and stick up for ourselves. Be ready! My name is James Wallace IV, and I'm a dynamic disciple here at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I'm ready to serve in my community because my church has different ministries like the Boy Scouts and other children involved ministries. We're ready. Everybody, thank you for tuning in with us today as we celebrate our annual Children and Youth Sunday. I'm going to turn the mic over to Reverend Queen because he has a lot of information to share and to give some awards. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Pat. So listen, I don't got too much to do. I just got a rack of awards, character trade awards. We want to thank Pastor again for the opportunity to celebrate each and every ministry that serves in the children and youth department. My time is short and we got some people to celebrate. So bear with me. Are y'all ready? Yes. I didn't hear them though. I got to hear like hit the hearts or something. Let me know that y'all ready. Okay, y'all ready. Here we go. From the Boy Scouts ministry for the character trait award of trustworthiness, we have Phoenix King. Phoenix is a rising sophomore at Suitland High School's Creative, Visual, and Performing Arts program. He holds a 3.27 GPA and is a student in the Kevin Durant College Track Program. Phoenix dreams of being an entrepreneur of Brand Designs Company. He has demonstrated trustworthiness through his actions of reliability, honesty, and good character. Please help me celebrate Phoenix King. From the Cub Scouts Ministry, for the character trait of responsibility, we have Darren Richardson. Darren is a rising sixth grader with a 4.0 GPA. He is a member of a bird club, nature club, robotics, and he plays soccer. Darren knows the importance of giving back to the community and serves as a volunteer to harvest food for the food banks. Darren was the first scout in his group to earn the Arrow of Light Award, the highest award in Cub Scouts. He served as the patrol leader during the summer camp and continues to present information to his peers to help them earn their badges. Please show some love for Mr. Darren Richardson. Next up from Children's Bible Study, for the character trait of honesty, we have Chase Brown. Chase is on the honor roll. He is also in the Sunbeams and serves as a junior usher. Chase is known for telling his teachers, his peers, and anyone else that they should always be honest. His teachers can always rely on him to tell the truth. For the character trait of honesty, please help me celebrate Chase Brown. And from Gideon's Army, for the character trait of courage, we have Zavi Patterson. Zavi has displayed incredible courage this year, having overcome personal tragedy in his life. He boldly participates during the Gideon's Army sessions and has the courage to ask the tough, personal, and sensitive questions in his pursuit of godly wisdom. Will y'all help me recognize for the character trait of courage, Mr. Zavi Patterson? And from the Girl Scouts Ministry, for the character traits of ambition and compassion, please celebrate Bethany Jackson. Through great desire, determination, and ambition, Bethany received her Gold Award, which is the highest honor in Girl Scouts. 
Bethany shows compassion for the mental health of middle and high school students as they transition to the next level of schooling. She has created various workshops and panel discussions on mental awareness. Bethany also serves the homeless ministry and the Alpha Course, all while being a member of the Latin and National Honors Program with a 3.9 GPA. Y'all celebrate Bethany Jackson. Oh, this is my favorite. And from the nursery ministry, for the character trait of enthusiasm, we have Isaiah Crowder. The nursery ministry is nominating Isaiah Crowder, who is two years old and loves to play with his three sisters and working with his dad in the yard. His teachers say that he is always eager to learn and a great participant in class activities. Y'all show some love for Isaiah Crowder. Next up from Project Manhood, for the character trait of perseverance, we have Emmanuel Manny Barclay. Manny is a member of Project Manhood's Group 3. When Manny's grandmother first brought him to the ministry, he was shy. But his persistence and positive attitude, coupled with his willingness to always receive guidance and direction from his mentors, has made his journey very rewarding. Let's celebrate Manny Emmanuel Barclay. Next up, we have Rebels. And for the character trait of leadership, we have Mr. Gregory Tyler. Leadership. Gregory is a rising senior at Riverdale Baptist, where he is on the baseball team, the football team, and the Riverdale Prayer Club, all while maintaining a 3.7 GPA. He serves as the co-lead of the Youth Leadership Council, and he is faithful to both Rebels and Unashamed Ministries. He is dependable, focused, and great at inspiring his peers to serve God. Help me recognize Mr. Gregory Tyler. Next up from the Star Ministry, for the character trait of kindness, we have Miss Sarah Gaskins. Sarah is a graduating senior, and the Star Ministry reports that Sarah is kind, caring, and respectful. They say that she has been consistent and has shown these qualities during not only the Star Sessions, but also at their witnessing outreaches. Y'all help me celebrate for the Character Award of Kindness, Miss Sarah Gaskins. And from Children's Institute for the Character Trade Award of Respect, please help me celebrate Olivia Bowen. Olivia is a rising eighth grader who currently holds a GPA of 4.0. She is a regular Sunday school student and Olivia is known for her ability to treat all people with honor and dignity. Olivia speaks to others with kindness and listens intently to show respect for others. Because of Olivia's respectful nature, she is an excellent role model for her peers and how to demonstrate respect for one another. Please give it up for Olivia Bowen. And last but not least, from the Unashamed Youth Ministry, for the character trait of creativity and leadership, we have Joy Barnett. Joy is a rising sophomore at the Academy of Health Sciences at Prince George's Community College. She has a GPA of 4.2. Joy is the unashamed social media lead and has stepped up her leadership by creating and editing graphics and videos for the ministry. Recently, she created an amazing picture to demonstrate that youth can use their art as their voice in this world. She is passionate, dependable, consistent, and not afraid to hold her peers accountable. Help me celebrate Miss Joy Barnett. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor, and for all of y'all for helping us celebrate the children and youth department. God bless. Stop, don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Um, I fear being, once again, like racially profiled and a cop like pulling me over and me not getting back into the car alive. We are going to begin with tens of thousands of Americans marching tonight in cities across the country, calling for change in the wake of George Floyd's death. George Floyd! George Floyd! I am a part of the youth ministry, Unashamed Ministry specifically, and we decided as a collective group to go down and protest for what is right. 
When I got down there in the general population, I saw nothing but young people. It was so many young people. And it just made me feel like we were really starting a change. All different races, ethnicities, people from everywhere. My father has shown me that um, it's okay to um, be afraid, but you can't hide and well, like you can't like hide in fear because at one point you're going to have to stand up to, for what's right. You're going to have to know that you have to stand up for what's right. You have to know when it's time and when it's right to stand up because there is going to be a time. Um, our generation just wants to be noticed and having to be able to hear what we have to say. I just wanted to go over there just to make sure that I understood why Black Lives Matter. I think um, a misconception about our ancestors is that we are not our ancestors and our ancestors weren't weak because we're here now. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And that's why we have the opportunity to speak and be powerful and use our voices for what's right. And, you know, sometimes you can be scared and be fearful of speaking and being so loud about Jesus and so loud about his principles and his teachings. And, you know, there can, there's sometimes a hesitation. But once you break that barrier, it's so amazing and it's so um, free and, and you feel a sense of freedom to just speak loud and proud of what you believe in because there is nothing but God that's going to change this. And God knows that black lives matter, so you can't deny that. Um, God is really everywhere. He's, um, he's watching over you. He's just helping you get through these hard, these hard times. Black lives do matter and I matter because I am here and the next generation is here to make a mark on this world. And I just want to make sure that I'm treated fairly and I have the same rights as other people have. I believe that we are the future. We are nothing but the future. We're ready for anything. It's proof in the pudding that we are standing up for what's right and that we're going to make change. We are future amazing doctors, lawyers, um, council women, council men, all that, senators, all of that, presidents, everything. I believe in us. I believe in what we are standing for. I believe that Black Lives Matter. I believe that young people matter and our voices matter as well. It's important for us to speak out and be the change and be the future. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! I just want to tell you what I think about you.
done such a phenomenal job taking over this service. Now, let's show some love to the greatest youth pastor in the whole wide world, Reverend Jonathan Queen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Reverend Jonathan Queen, and it is my honor to share with you all on this remix annual children and youth Sunday. Y'all make some noise for the young people who have done their thing. Amen. Amen. Listen, I have to first and foremost thank our pastor, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr., the best, most awesomest pastor in the whole wide world. He is uh, my example for righteous living and righteous leading. And of course, First Lady Trina, who brings grace, elegance, and excellence to every aspect of our church. Amen. Yeah, to our church elders, and of course, to the amazing leaders of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I just want to salute y'all and let y'all know from the bottom of my heart, I miss y'all. I miss everybody. I'm telling you, we need to give back. But amen. I'm grateful for this virtual party that we have here. We have some of these amazing leaders and young people from the church here with me. Make me feel good that I'm not all by myself. Amen. Listen, before we move forward, did y'all see how amazing these young people have been all service? Drop some hearts in the comments. Show them some love. Make some noise for them. Yes, they have done an excellent job. And, and for that, I have to salute my, my mentor. He is the head of the Children and Youth Department. Y'all know him as Reverend William S. Berkeley Jr., a.k.a. the Great and Powerful Oz. Shout out to Reverend Pat Singleton and the entire Children and Youth Department, along with our partners, if y'all didn't catch it, the Music and Arts Department, Reverend Stephen Hurd, Anthony Brown, and all of the uh, ministries in the Music and Arts. Thank y'all for being our partners on this amazing day. Um, 
Listen, I am super proud before I move forward. Um, I would be remiss if I did not allow y'all to take at least one moment and help me celebrate uh, my bride, my partner in everything, ministry life. Uh, there is no separation. Y'all make some noise for Mrs. Lena Queen. That is my, my heart. She fine. She all mine. Amen. 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 Listen, I want y'all to celebrate our young people, and I do have a word from God, but we're not going to change up anything in regards to what we do. We are going to pray, and pastor has instructed us to pray for people that we want to see get saved, and we see what's going on in this world today. I think it's imperative that we pray uh, for more people to fall in love with Jesus because he's a lot closer to coming back than he was yesterday. Amen? Yeah. So let's, let's take some time out and pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we love you. We adore you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We are grateful that you give us the opportunity to celebrate you, to worship you, to serve you, Lord. Right now, we are praying for those who do not know you, Lord, for those who are, are going through this life uh, with a a uh, half a tank. They have no idea the fullness that is available to them if they would just come running asking, what must I do to be saved, Lord? So, Father God, right now, we pray that you allow this moment to speak to them, to speak to someone, Lord. Father God, hide me behind the cross, Lord. Let it be about you, Lord. Let it be your words, not mine. Let it be your will, not mine. Let it be your way, not mine. Let them see Jesus and not Jonathan. And I promise you, when all is said and done, you will get the glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. And the people of God say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, listen, we got a word. Um, it comes from the book of Daniel chapter 3. Now, there's a lot here, but I'm going to go ahead and surmise as much as I can. I'm going to read for you first from Daniel 3, uh, 14 to 19. And it reads as follows. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Let's stop right there. I want to give you all my message title for this remix, Children and Youth Sunday. Somebody say, On Fire for God. Okay, that was good. That was pretty good. I know you all with me. Type it in the comments. On Fire for God. Amen, amen, amen. So let me, let me tell y'all, in ancient Greece, runners competed in a relay race called a Lampa de Dromia. Yeah, say that three times. Uh, in, this, in this race, the runners held a torch in their hand and passed it on to the next runner until the final member of the team crossed the finish line. The prize wasn't awarded to the, to the team that ran fastest. It wasn't awarded to the team that got there first. The first team to reach the finish line with its torch still lit was the winner. The prize was awarded to the team who made it with their torch still lit. And, and, and I, I need you all to understand that um, I'm not even preaching yet, but I feel that it's appropriate to encourage somebody from the starting block to look at 
themselves and ask, am I running with the fire still burning? Am I on fire for God? Am I running in the relevant race of right now? Are you on your feet racing against racism? Are you racing against systemic oppression? Are you trying to outrun the unjust murders of innocent individuals? Or are you racing for black lives to matter? Are you racing for policing and criminal justice reform? Are you racing for racial reconciliation and for authentic allies who use their privilege and positions of power to produce real change in systems, laws, and policies? I need you to recognize that throughout this service, you have heard young people say that they are ready. And they are. And I'm excited. I'm excited because I see so many young people reaching for the torch saying, we're ready to run. And in certain situations, my generation, the generation before me, the current generation has allowed the fire to go out. And these young people are rushing to the front of the front lines, reaching for an unlit torch and saying, it's okay because we will relight it. We have that fire. We are that fire and we're ready. Somebody say we're ready. Yes, 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 yes. They, they are on fire for God. And I connect with these young people because this being on fire thing is it's real for me because there was a, a time when I was running full speed head first into a different type of fire. Uh, that hello fire without the O. Uh, some of you know my story and some of you don't, but needless to say, God did a work in me. I'm a miracle. I'm one of God's redeemed and rescued miracles. And, and, and I won't go into it, but I just want to ask you a question. Do you know people who were not raised in church? People who were so lost in sin that when they got saved, the transformation was so powerful that they ain't know how to act sometimes. Do you know anyone who spent their childhood running from God, their formative years doing everything the devil suggested or anything they could think of from drugs and alcohol and, and sex and having children out of wedlock and fighting and cursing and catching criminal cases? I'm talking about people who were headed to the penitentiary or to the cemetery and then God got a hold of them and now they are on fire for Christ. They are excited. They are overwhelmed so much so that they can't stick the protocol. They can't stick to the traditions. They throw the script down and they scream out from the bottom of their heart, from the cubby hole of their soul. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. And that's that's why I relate to these three Hebrew boys that we read about in our text. They have been through some stuff. Yeah. Their people, were, their people were conquered. Their, their temple and their land was destroyed. They were kidnapped as children and forced to serve this foreign king. Their names were changed. They had to learn the Babylonian language and culture and assimilate to the custom of their captors. And yet we see here that when it came to worshiping a statue and denying God, they said no. <laughs> they refused to allow anyone, including the king, to make them go against their God. These three Hebrew boys were serious and they represent one of our early examples of resistance. I'm talking about real righteous resistance. They were on fire for God. They were on fire for God. Literally, like what they did, their resistance led to them literally being on fire for God. But even before they were thrown into the fiery, fiery furnace, they were brave and bold and willing to sacrifice even their lives before they would compromise who they were to God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had courage. They had courage. Somebody type courage in there. Say courage. Um, they were on fire for God. And I want to share three things that we, we need if we're going to be on fire for God, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We, we have to have courage. That's wrapped into these three things. But these three things I want to give you. Number one, in order to be on fire for God and to have courage, you must have character. Yes, yes, character, character, who you really are, the you behind your mask, character, who you are when no one's watching, who you are in the dark. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refuse to compromise their character. Look at what it says, Daniel 3.8. Uh, uh, it says, therefore, 
at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, they was telling, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Character. Character. These Jews, they were Jews who had been set over affairs in a land which they weren't even citizens. That's point one that they had character. And even though the consequences were known, they knew what would happen to them. They still refused to worship the statue when the music dropped. Character. Now, now let me give you all a side note because I could preach a whole bunch of sermons just on the aspect of this command for them to do this when they heard this music. Um, music, 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 and um, how we listen to music, some of the music we listen to has us operating outside of our character and bowing down to the ways of this world rather than what God would have for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear some amens. Some of y'all, now y'all, y'all done turned your head because I'm talking about you, but uh, what you listen to impacts how you act. Now, we may not bow down physically, but we've bowed our hearts to the pressures of this world. Yeah, when you allow your mind to entertain music that glorifies drugs and glamorizes violence, when you listen to music that disrespects women and demeans women and calls them out of their name, you're bowing down. Uh, when you listen to music that, that tells, uh, tells you to disrespect your parents or your teachers or the authorities in your life, you're, you're bowing down to this world. Um, when you do anything that doesn't represent being a child of God, it may not just be the music, but the, the stuff that you uh, repost from your social media, the inappropriate stuff that you continue with, uh, when you lie, when you gossip, when you slander, when you judge, when you criticize, you are bowing bowing down, and the Bible is very clear. You cannot serve two masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young people, and even some of you more seasoned people, I need you to listen. We will never change this world as long as we want to be just like it. Ooh, I said something there. I said something. That's, that's your character, your character. When you're on fire for God, your character will control your passion and your desire which means, young people, this is for you. That means you're going to honor your body. When you got character, you will never get under the covers unless you're under a covenant. That's marriage. I'm just saying. I'm I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. I'm just saying that when you have character, you will you will not walk down the hallway of a hotel before you walk down an aisle to your spouse. I'm just saying when you are on fire for God and you have character, you know that uh, uh, your circle has to be tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that you don't do the no new friends attitude. I'm just saying that you got to be just as picky with your friends as you are with which selfie you're going to post onto your social media. I'm just saying when you have character, you're going to have the courage you need. So for real, let's look back. Let's look at how they talk back to the enemy in their life. Daniel uh, 3, 16, uh, it says, um, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But let it be known even if he doesn't. That's what I love. Even if he doesn't, we will not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. If I was there, I would have looked at the three Hebrew boys and been like, yeah, talk that talk. Y'all talk and let them know. What you hear in this statement gives us our second point. They said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Point two, in order to be on fire for God, for you to have courage, you must also have a covering. A covering, a covering. The three Hebrew boys recognized God as their covering, and that gave them courage. When you know God is for you, it doesn't matter who comes against you. You know you're covered, and your and your courage comes from your covering. The king orders, he, look at him, he orders for them to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Now, pay attention to this. Back in Daniel 1, 
um, we are introduced to Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. And, and when we get the verse uh, 19 and 20, um, I'm going to just give you all 19 and 20. It says, then the king interviewed them and among them all none was found like Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That was their names before it was changed. Therefore, they served before the king. Now watch this. In all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were all in his realm. That's Daniel 1, 19. And 20. Fast forward two chapters, Daniel 3, 19 and 20. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Did y'all see what happened? They went from being 10 times better to facing a furnace heated seven times hotter. The same king the same king who has celebrated them and elevated them now wants to eliminate them. Ooh, that's, that's a word for you. That's a word for some of you because the same people who were your celebrators can become your haters. Oh, Lord, I said something there. Listen, listen, the same people or, 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 or listen, the same people that were your, that it happened to Jesus, it happened to them, and it happens to us. Or, or maybe it's just me. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. How many of y'all, y'all trying to live right? You're trying to do right. And people who used to be in your corner are now in the opposite corner like they're your opponent. They used to like you. Now they want to fight you. Or even worse, this is what really get me. You have people that don't even know you and they dislike you for no reason. Oh, Lord. Am I the only one? Is it just me? I mean, I, I even created something to identify. It. It's because of your covering. I call it anti-anointing. Anti means against anointing. There are people who are against your anointing for no reason. They don't even know why. It's just you could give them all the time in the world and they still couldn't articulate why they hate you. Now, here's what I've learned, though. What I've learned is that they can sense they can see that you've overcome a struggle and they don't understand why you remain humble and connect your success to God rather than taking credit for it yourself. Who am I preaching to? Anybody gain some haters once you got on fire for God? Anybody, anybody gain some people who just start talking to you like this? Why you don't want to come with us? Why you don't want to hang out no more? Why are you always at church? Why are you always talking about Jesus? Why you keep sending me scriptures? Why you pray too much? You're doing too much. It don't take all of that. You're going to Bible study, Sunday school, dance practice, serving in the youth ministry. Hold on, it's Thursday. Who goes to church when it's not Sunday? Where do they they do that. At. Do y'all got any friends or ex-friends or anti-anointing people in your lives that talk like that? Here's what I need y'all to understand. Listen very carefully. I'm going to say this one time. I might repeat it. You can never build the kingdom with people who still crave the attention of the village. Jesus, that's it. I'm going. Somebody should have took a lap. Do I need to run by myself? I'm telling you, you can never build the kingdom with people who still crave the attention of the village. Hear you, me. When you are on fire for God, the oil that is on you will always attract attacks and people will hate you for no reason. When you're on fire for God, the people on your level don't want to let you go and the people on the next level don't want to let you in. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. When you're on fire for God, you have a covering. You're covered, which means you have protection, which means God has kicked open some doors for you. God has set up a hedge of protection. He has placed boundaries so you don't fall back. Matter of fact, I don't even got to tell you. It's in here. It's in the word. Look what verse 21 says. Then these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Watch this. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's called 
protection. Your covering gives you protection. Watch this. And the fire that is meant to destroy you will instead destroy the people who put their hands on you. And the fire that is meant to destroy you will instead destroy all of the things that have had you bound, that have had you tied up. Oh, I need somebody to catch this. Anyone, anyone been in a fire and you thought it was going to harm you? You've been in a fire and, and you thought it was going to destroy you, but instead it burnt off the things that had you bound. It burnt off the things that had you tied up. It burnt off the things that had you locked in. It burnt off the things that was meant to destroy you. It, it was the fire that purified you, the fire that burned off the addictions. It was the fire that burned off the stress and the anxiety. It was the fire that purified you, that burned off the cuss and spirit. It was the fire that burned off the desire to drink and smoke, that burnt off the bad relationships. It was the fire that burnt off that attitude problem you had. The fire burnt off that anger issue you had. It was the fire that set you free. God will use the very thing meant to destroy you, to develop you, to build you, to sharpen you. The enemy wants us to be with him in the hellfire to burn for eternity. But just like the three Hebrew boys, God provides a covering that keeps us from being consumed by the fire. Some of you are so afraid of the fire that you don't realize that you've been in it and it hasn't harmed you. You're paralyzed by your own fear, but you're not tied up anymore. You're in the fire, but you're free and the the flames can't phase you. And most importantly, Jesus is there with you. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. That's my favorite part. And it gives us our final point. In order to be on fire for God, you have to have, uh, what was the first one? You have to have character. Uh, Number two, you have to have your covering. And number three, this is the best part. You have to have Christ. You have to have Christ. If you want to be on fire for God, you have to have Christ. Look what it says, um, Daniel 3, 24. um, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. They are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Listen, (laughs) Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. He said, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire. They are not harmed, and the fourth is like the Son of God. That's Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. That's Jesus. And and the reason you make it through the fire is because Jesus is in it with you. Oh, someone should have shouted. Someone needs to take a lap around their living room, around their kitchen, around your computer. Someone needs to recognize that you are in the fire. You are untied. You are unharmed and you're walking around with the fourth person who is the son of God. You have Christ with you. Oh, I wish I had a witness that would get this. Okay, I understand. I understand. Let me let me let me close up. Let me let me let me break it down for you. Some of you been through a lot this year. Y'all been through so much already. And this year has probably felt like a continuous fire. Some of you might even be afraid of what's next. What can happen next? What what can the next few months or the next few weeks bring? And and you're full of fear. And I I just need you to recognize that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Yes, you've been in the fire, but you aren't tied up anymore. You're in the fire, but you're free and the flames can't harm you. Yes, you're in the fire, but most importantly, Jesus is there with you. You're in the fire, but you also have a fire inside of you. And when you're on fire for God, no other fire can consume you. When you're on fire for God, no storm can harm you. No person can break you. No lie can stand against you. No harm can hinder you. No attack can impact you. When you are on fire for God, no weapon formed will prosper. You are covered by the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I hear it from a couple miles away. Just... Look around, see that the fire hasn't hurt you. 
It's been part of the process to form you. Jesus is with you the whole time. Now, now watch this. I, I need you to recognize that the king called them to come out of the furnace. And when the officials and advisors crowded around them, they saw that not a hair on their heads were singed, their clothing was not scorched, and they didn't even smell of smoke. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I wish y'all would catch that. They didn't even smell like smoke. Where my athletes at? Where my runners at? Where my basketball players, my baseball player, football player? You know that when you do some work, your sweat will represent the work that you have put in and you will smell like what you've been doing. You will smell like what you've been through. Where, where my drinkers at? Y'all don't got to wave, but where my people? You know when you drink alcohol, it comes back out of your pores. You can smell the alcohol. You smell like what you've been through. Where my marijuana smokers at? Don't raise your hands. I look at y'all. You know for a fact that when you smoke that weed, that weed smoke hard to get out your hair. It won't come out your clothes. You will smell like what you've been through. And it says that they came out of the fire and they didn't even smell like smoke. <laughs> the king, his advisors, they should have been scared. You don't want no smoke with somebody who don't smell like the smoke that they've been through. What? Oh, I thought a Nebuchadnezzar said something. What? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I just want to make sure that I'm not the only one who can say, I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through and I don't smell like what I've been through. That the grace of Jesus allows me to be a sweet smelling aroma in the nostrils of my heavenly father. I am grateful that God has given me a refuge and a shelter. He gives me character. He gives me a covering and I have Christ. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me the best assignment ever. And that is to be on fire for God. I want to close. I know our time is up. Um, I just, I, I, want to, I want to do this for the young people. It's Children and Youth Sunday, and I, I want to give the invitation by way of illustration. It's a famous story, and this is for those who struggle with why they should accept Jesus Christ. So just indulge me for a moment. This famous story happened a long time ago. It was in a small town, and there was a man whose job it was to simply stand at the intersection of the main road of their town and hold up a lantern so that when the cars were coming would know to stop because a train was coming as well. That was his one job. He had the responsibility to keep people safe, wave a lantern, hold it up so that the cars would stop and the train could go by. But one day this man got sick and his grandson stepped up and said, I'll do it. I know what to do. I've been watching you for years. I can do it. And the young man went out and he went out to do his job and he was doing a great job. But then something happened. There was a car coming and the train was coming. So he, he knew what he was supposed to do. He went up and he held up the lantern, but the car kept coming. So he got a little bit closer out and he jumped and he waved the lantern, but the car kept coming. The train is coming and the car kept coming. I need you to understand that the young man, he's frantic, he's panicking, he's jumping up and down, he's waving the lantern and the car keeps coming. And if we can look in the car, we see a family, a, a, a husband, a wife and two children and they're, they're just driving in the car. And we see the young man waving the lantern frantically and he, he's yelling, stop. But the car kept coming and the train kept coming and the car kept coming and the train kept coming and there was a crash and everybody in the car died. Everyone in the car perished. And then they had a, a lawsuit, so they're in court. And the young man whose job was to hold up the lantern for his grandfather is on the stand. And the, the, the prosecuting attorney is asking him, he's saying, did you hold up the lantern? And he's saying, yes. He's like, but was the car coming? He said, yes. But did you hold up the lantern? Yes. Did you wave the lantern? Yes. He's answering yes. And then finally the lawyer said, well, why do you think the car did not stop? And the young man, knowing that he could not lie, lifted his head up and said, I held up the lantern, but it wasn't lit. I need y'all to understand that we are all called to be on fire for God. And many of us are running around like a lantern that's not lit. If you want to change some things, if you want to protest, if you want to do something that's going to change this world, start by being committed to Christ. That's the last C. If you want to be on fire for God, you got to be committed. So right now, there's some information that's coming up on the screen. The information is telling you how you can commit and you can call in or there are people waiting to talk to you. You can go on the website and hit the commit button. You can send an email. 
But whatever you need to do, make that move so that you too can be on fire for God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you and we bless you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the lives that have been impacted and touched, Lord. Thank you for your word. Now, Lord, right now, we just ask that you do what only you can do, Lord. Convict hearts. Transform lives. We give you the glory, the honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you all again so much, family. I love you all. Thank all of you. Pastor, I love you. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Reverend Queen, for such an amazing message. Well, that's it, everyone. Thank you for being a part of this experience, and I'll see you next week. But, 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 before you go, we have one last message from the children and youth. Y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? What? What? Let's go! FBCG!